Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to show you how you can create a retro mini Moog style bass line like the one that you hear on Michael Jackson's hit single Thriller. And for this one, you're not gonna need a real mini Moog. you just need Retro. So the first thing that I've done is I've prepared a drum loop that gives me a groove in order to create this sound. I use Groove Agent 5 and I'm using some Lindrum samples that I've loaded into it. I did some decomposing and it sounds like this. That's great for me. This gives me enough material to get some groove and create that sound. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to load Retrolo. Now, one thing that I want to say straight away is this sound is pretty simple, but what I wanna do in this video is for you not to just copy the settings and the things that I do on Retrolo. I want you to understand the method behind this and the philosophy behind building a sound. So, as I said, it's not a very hard sound to create, but I think the process is really important to help you understand how you can build a sound in Retrolog and any virtual analog or analog synth for that matter, right? So Retrolog is one of those synths that can sound really, really analog and it has an amazing sound. I have a lot of synths in my arsenal. I have uh, all the big ones, Omnisphere, Serum, um, Silent, uh, June, you name it. Retrolog is the synth that I use the most because I can get to the sound that I want very, very quickly. And for the sound that I want, it gives me the best results as fast as possible. And I'm going to show you this in this example. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to play the bass line so that we can have the actual notes and start creating the sound with some material. So let's do it. Great, now that we have the riff in, I can start creating the sound. So the first thing that I wanna do is, number one, I want to make this sound monophonic because it's a bass. So I'm going to turn on mono. I'm going to turn off retrigger because I want to have this kind of legato sound if I need to. Again, I'm trying to recreate Michael Jackson's Thriller bass sound, but I want this sound to be versatile if I want to use it for my own productions as well. So for this kind of sound, I would like to have a um, legato element to this. That's why I'm going to set the trigger to off, and then I'm going to go to my trigger mode and set it to legato. Okay, so now it sounds like this. And maybe I'm going to add a little bit of glide. Maybe, I don't know, like 40 milliseconds, something like this. I think this should be enough. Let's see. And now let's take care of our oscillators, right? So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to keep oscillator one in the sawtooth wave. That sounds great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down a little bit in terms of volume, okay? Just because I want to have a little bit of headroom because I'm going to add multiple oscillators. Now, I think the original bass line was uh, created in a mini Moog and I've read that also they used a couple of mini Moogs and they sync them somehow, where maybe with CV, I'm not sure exactly how. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add another oscillator and I'm going to keep it at Sawtooth Wave but this time I'm going to go one octave lower, okay? Like this. And let's play it. Okay, nice and fat. And now I'm going to turn it down as well. I want to have a little bit lower of this one. Okay. A little bit lower, so now I'm going to add the sub oscillator. I just want to give this a little bit of depth, a little bit of low end. So let's go and turn on sub, and in this case, I'm going to go for a square wave. Let's see how that sounds. I'm going to turn it down though, because it's going to be very loud. Let's listen to it loud first. It adds a little bit of extra fatness to the sound. And for a bass line, we want this, okay? Now, let's go to the interesting stuff, okay? 
the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of my filter. The filter is going to give us like, I mean, the oscillators give us, I think for this sound, the 50% and the filter is going to be the next 50% of the sound. Now, when I was trying to recreate this sound, I found that even though the Minimoog has a 24 dB uh, per octave filter, low pass. Uh, in this case, I found that in Retrolog, I preferred the 18 dB filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the filter to low pass 18 dB, and then I'm going to turn down the cutoff while it's playing. Let's see. Now, when you set your cutoff, what I'm trying to aim when I'm creating bass sounds is to have the low end to the point where I want it to be. I want to have this kind of depth in the sound and if the filter is very open, then you don't get this nice low end. The more you close the filter, you get a more assertive low end. But of course, you lose the top end, right? But because we're going to use an envelope, I want to figure out where I'm going to end, where my low end point is going to be. So I'm going to set this to around 86, something like that. Okay. Now, this sounds very dark. So what we can do is we can add an envelope. So I'm going to turn the envelope up and maybe go around, I don't know, let's listen to this and see where we want to go. I like the way it sounds around here. Let's try and play with the envelope shape for our filter. So I'm going to turn down the sustain what happens when you turn down the sustain is basically you're going to make the sustain of your sound darker, of course, if you have a low pass filter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the decay time to get the filter to open very quickly and then close back to the sustain level here. OK, let's try that. See what it does? Now, one of the very cool tricks that I found about Retrolog, when I spoke to one of their guys in the development team at NAMM show this year, shout out to Sebastian, is that if you want Retrolog to sound like a Minimoog, you should set your center, you know, your, your key follow center key to F1, okay? And then what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm going to turn up the key follow to get the result that I want. Now, what key follow is, is depending on where you play on the keyboard, the filter will be more open or more closed, depending on where you set this parameter right here. So now, if I play with the key follow parameter here, you will see what's gonna happen. So let's try and find a value that we're happy with. Yeah, no, this sounds good. Now, what I want to do is, of course, I'm going to get this kind of... Um, the Michael Jackson bass line is a little bit nasal. It has this kind of... Um, Three to f uh, 300 to 400 uh, and it has this attack right there. So what I'm going to do to help with that is I'm going to add a little bit of resonance. Let's try that. See what a huge difference the key follow does to the sound, okay? Right, now, I mean, the sound is almost there. To me, this sounds like I could use this sound easily uh, in a feature band or on a remix, and you can come extremely close just by tweaking these parameters a little bit. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my effects panel, and I'm going to add a little bit more bite to the sound. I'm going to turn on the EQ, and I'm going to go to my low end, and I add a little bit of bottom end there. And 
I want to enhance this kind of nasal quality. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to around 300 hertz here. Narrower Q, okay, and add a little bit of gain. Not too much, just a, just a tiny bit. I mean, of course, if you want to go ahead and add EQ and compression to this sound, you can do this later on. I would add too much compression, and that's one of the reasons why I haven't added any distortion. In general, in Retrolog, I love the distortion types. I think they're very creative. They can sound really warm, really analog. But check what happens if I add distortion to this one. It sounds like a tube saturation. You know, if we have the tube type, check it out. I'm losing a little bit of this percussive quality that this bass has, you know, this ba bum 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 ba bum 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 and it makes the sound a little bit more even because of course you add a little bit of compression with the distortion, you know, it's just natural compression. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my effects and if I want to enhance even more this kind of nasal quality, I can go to my resonator, find a nice frequency around here and add a little bit of resonance. <laughs> And then, and then mix it in a little bit. And this is not a necessary step, but I find that all these little layers add a little bit to the sound. I'm going to add just a little bit of it, and then I'm going to go to my modulation here, and I'm going to turn it on. I want to add a little bit of unpredictability to the sound, and I find that uh, the ensemble effects in the modulation section can help if you add just a tiny bit of it. And so if we consider that there were two Moogs playing, I'm not sure about that, this can help us get to that sound. Let's listen to it. See, I'm going very low with the shimmer rate, and this adds a little bit of variation to the sound, but it doesn't sound exactly like a chorus or a phaser. It sounds very unique. So let's go and mix it in. Very, very little I'm gonna add. So let's play the sound. And as a last thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of attack to the filter. A little bit, just to open the attack a little bit. Tiny bit more resonance. And that's it! So that's it guys, this is how simple it is to create analog sounds, mini Moog style sounds like Michael Jackson's Thriller in Retrolog and you don't need to have like a very eclectic weird synth in order to do that, Retrolog can do this and way way more. So before you shell out buying more and more synths, just learn the ones that you have. If you are a Cubase user you have Retrolog and it's a brilliant synth and if you don't have Cubase, Retrolog is available for pretty much every DAW out there as far as I know. As far as I'm concerned, Retrolog is a very good educational tool as well when it comes to synthesizers because it makes sense. You have your oscillators, you have your filters, your envelopes, everything is in one page and everything is accessible. You don't need to go and figure out different pages and layouts and drag things and all these things. Everything is right there. As far as I'm concerned, it's the synth that I use to teach synthesis, subtractive synthesis, to people that have no idea on how to create a sound. So there you go, guys. That's how you can create a bass line like you hear on Michael Jackson's Thriller. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the like button right there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I'd love to see you back. And if you have a Cubase or Retrolog user, a friend that you'd like to share this video with, please feel free to do so. I'll see you next time. Have fun and I'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.